Okay, we are back after uh, three and a half or four hours of nothing but cleaning this keyboard up. Let me tell you what, this thing looks like it's just about brand new. Almost. Uh, let me tell you what, Gojo, if you need to remove tape residue, if you need to remove stuck on tape residue or something like that, stop the video immediately. Go to your local auto parts store and pick up a thing of Gojo. That stuff works wonders. So, but yeah, there was tape residue. There was tape residue in like 20 spots all over this freaking keyboard. It's insane. But soak it in some Gojo. Soak it in some Gojo for a little bit. Scrub it with a wire brush. So, uh, combine that with some elbow grease, and it, and it all just comes right off. And then I hit it with some cleaning solution. Then I hit it with some spray on, spray on cleaning solution and wipe that down. And then I took it back in, inside after uh, spending a few hours out in the garage cleaning it up. Took it back inside, washed both pieces with Dawn. Then took it back outside and uh, sprayed it dry. And here we are, about four hours. Here we are, about four hours of cleaning, washing, and drying later. And let me tell you what, this thing looks almost brand new. As long as you don't look at the bottom. But the bottom is, I'm going to consider the bottom of the keyboard to be permanently stained. And that's as far as I'm going to go with it. Okay. Moving along to the next phase of the process, I'm going to go ahead and get our barrel plate back out of our case. Oh look, I put that dead square in the front, dead square in the middle of the field of view of the camera without even trying. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to turn the barrel plate over and Power switch off, and I'm going to use a nifty little tool called a Dremel to. Well, yeah, we're going to cut the studs, those little studs off, and we're going to use an engraving tool attached to a Dremel, and we are going to create divots where the studs used to be. So that way we have something, so that way the drill bit can go in a little bit easier. I believe the way this is going to work, I'm going to cut a stud off, then turn the Dremel on, and create a little divot. Wow, that didn't even increment the load ball in the UPS. Precise hands are required here. That's all. We now have a nice, neat little divot to which our uh, drill bit can fit into. And uh, you know, this is going to be a very long, monotonous, and boring process, so I'm going to cut the video. Well, actually, not not just yet. I'm going to do a couple more, especially this one. In fact, let's zoom way in on that. There we go. It's almost too close. Okay, now we're just going to lock. Now I'm going to go ahead and lock in the focus. So that way the camera focus doesn't drift and verify that we're on the correct one. So I'm going to take my wire cutters. It's the wrong side, Will. I'm going to take my wire cutters and cut it off. And then, the little stud that I cut off, I'm going to take our drill, turn it 
turn it on, sitting at 5,000 RPM with the engraving tool attached. And we are going to make a divot right where that used to be. certainly wasn't the best attempt at it. I hope that's concave enough to get the drill bit to center in. A little bit of tolerance is allowed, but, but it's basically that same process, except it's basically that same process for like every hole in the barrel plate. In fact, let's do another one right there. Head and cut it off. Verify position. Dremel on. And let's create another divot. And don't forget to account for the curvature of the barrel plate while you're doing this. That's all you need to do. Just create a little bit. Just create a concave divot that it can see that the drill bit can easily seat into. This is one thing I did not do whenever I bolt modded my first model in. And let me tell you what: getting some of those drill holes started was a pain in the butt, like you would not believe. So, uh, I'm not making that mistake again. And basically, the, and basically, once you get past the point of making a divot, the only thing that can, the only things that can really go wrong are you uh, basically completely mangling, basically putting the drill bit in at the completely wrong angle, and totally uh, messing up your drill hole. But anyways, uh, we'll be back in about 400 years, whenever this is done. Okay, we're back. That actually didn't take really, that actually didn't take very long. That took, uh, let's say about 15 minutes at most. But, now that we've got uh, all our divots created, we'll go ahead and get the drill bit out. and. I am going to give some uh, word of advice. Uh, you may have to have somebody hold the barrel plate for you while you're doing uh, everything on the everything on the yeah everything on the very back here where the function keys happen to live and uh, some of the stuff on the uh, far edges of the keyboard. There's three here. There's uh, three things here on the uh, uh, numpad block, and there's one right here in a pretty extreme corner that needs to... No, wait, uh, I'm thinking of something else. Right up here at the far upper right, of, basically right next to where the escape key goes. That's pretty difficult, and yeah. Actually, it looks like I forgot a couple. There we go. And it ge and this will generate quite a few little plastic shavings that will get absolutely everywhere in point one of nothing flat. So both the drilling and the uh, divot creation process will do that. We'll generate a ton of plastic uh, fragments. Then we'll get basically everywhere in point one of nothing point point one of nothing zero flat. So, anyways, 
Now we have our drill. Now it's on to the drilling phase of the process where we actually drill holes in the barrel plate. If your drill is a multi-speed drill or it has a gearbox system, set it to the lowest speed, which on this Craftsman battery operated drill is one, and set this to maximum torque. Okay, battery is almost fully charged. So now, uh, I'm going to do an easy one. I'm going to do an easy one right there. Okay, go ahead and lock focus. Okay, right there. So we're going to take our drill and we are going to basically put the drill bit right in the dead center of that divot and make sure the drill is in the setting where it actually puts stuff in. Okay, okay, so, uh, yep, we've got all of our divots made in the barrel plate and everything like that and now we need to drill holes into the barrel plate for our screws to thread into using a 1 16th drill bit so we're going to demonstrate with this one right here go and put the drill bit down into the barrel plate and we have weight on the barrel plate let's go ahead and start drilling And it's as simple as that. I'm not kidding. No special, no special effects, no nothing. It's made that simple. You literally put the drill bit down in, into the divot in the barrel plate. You pull the trigger, and you, you can do it. Even you can even do it going slow. Let me see. Where's my finger? Right there. And I'll do it again. That simple. And you just repeat that process for all of the holes. So, yeah, it's stupidly simple I didn't do I didn't do the divots as I've said before I didn't do the divots whenever I first whenever I bolt modded my uh, first model in the model in the tash to that's attached to my main computer and getting some of those holes started was a complete and total pain in the butt but now that but now that I've done the divots it is stupidly simple I certainly wouldn't I certainly would not go as far as to call it dummy proof but I will say it is very easy so we'll be back whenever all that's done okay we're back and all the holes are drilled uh, there was only one hole that I uh, that had a fail that I couldn't drill because I uh, didn't I didn't do the divot properly on it and it and the drill bit went the wrong way and I couldn't correct it so and that was this one right here. That's a non-critical one because it's backed up by this here. And it's backed up by this hole here and that hole right there. And, of course, I didn't do any of them on the bottom row because that's just going to be uh, held under the keyboard. That's just going to be held together by the keyboard casing anyways. So, uh... Now that all of the holes are drilled, we are going to go ahead and pre-thread our screws into the keyboard mechanism, into the uh, barrel plate. So, 
I'm going to go ahead and get the grab and get the bag of screws and stuff. And I am going to, and here it is, I am going to use the lid of the glad container because it has a little indent in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and separate uh, the screw, the nut, and the washer. So all we have left is just a screw. Then I'm going to take a size P1 Craftsman screwdriver. And here's a screw head. And I'm literally going to just screw it through the keyboard. And screw it through the barrel plate. Uh, maybe. I know that getting some of these screws started is a getting these screws started is a complete and total pain in the butt. I'm pushing, I pushed down, I got the screw, the bottom of the screw centered in the hole, then I pushed down real, real, uh, pretty hard, pushing down, and, uh, yeah, threading these is a bit of a pain. Let's try something here. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go in from back. So I'm gonna go in from the back here and uh, yeah, I'm gonna start off from the back here and try threading these in. Looks like going in from the back is going to prove to be effective. Because this, what's happening now is as I am threading this in, it is the screw is literally cutting in new threads in the barrel, in the hole I drilled in the barrel plate. And once the screw goes all the way down, I'm going to go ahead and back it out. screw all the way out. Now the screw will get quite warm, if not possibly hot. Now, I'll take the screw and I'll put it into the hole on the other side of the barrel plate, respective to where I just threaded it through. Then, uh, if this thing will cooperate with me, almost lost the screw. If this thing will cooperate with me, then I can thread the screw in from the other side of the barrel plate, which it looks like it's going to do. But basically, is when once I once I thread the screw in through the barrel plate, that's it. That screw will not be coming back out. The hole has served its the hole and the screw have served their purpose, and they will not be moving independently of one another again. So. As we can see here, as we can see here, the screw 
Um, you know, maybe I should change the camera focus back to auto. So as we can see here, the screw was sticking through the barrel plate. We see a screw head right there in the barrel plate. And we basically repeat this pro And uh, we do that process for all of the screws on the barrel plate. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and take the washer, your 532nd socket, and your, and your nut, and you can go ahead and assemble everything together. You, you can go ahead and put and put everything back to back together so that way you don't lose the washer or nut. And that is probably the most tedious process of bolt modding a Model M other than initial other than creating your initial divots on the barrel plate. But yeah, threading the screws is the most tedious process of actually bolt modding a Model M keyboard. Uh, either that or the cleanup. But the cleanup, you can do that without bolt modding the keyboard. But as but as part of a bolt mod process, it's best to go ahead and clean it up while you're in there, so we don't have to take it back apart and do it and take it back apart again. But anyways, I digress. We will be back either later tonight or tomorrow morning once I get all these screws threaded in and everything and all the nuts and washers and everything put back together. Here we are at 2312 local time that is 1112 uh, p.m. for those who do not know the 24-hour timing system and here we are the barrel plate has been uh, fully bolt modded uh, we got all the screws threaded through, we got all the washers and nuts temporarily installed, and, uh, that, and I'd say that process took me about an hour and a half to complete, but I now have the keyboard propped up on a couple of, on a couple of wooden uh, blocks here, they're, I'd say, uh, about a half, I'd say they're about a, quarter to a half inch or so. Uh, I'd say quarter, I'd say about a quarter inch thick, which is really all you need, which is really the most you want to, the thickest you want to go with these boards to support your barrel plate and what will eventually be reassembled into the key mechanism. And uh, yeah, but you're going to need these two boards here. You're going to need two quarter-inch thick boards that can run the entire uh, depth of the key mech, the key mechanism, because the springs will stick out just a slight, just a little tiny bit, about an eighth of an inch, uh, out of the uh, holes in the out of the uh, holes in the barrel plate, and. These springs do not need to have any kind of pressure on them whatsoever, or else reassembling the key mech is going to be insanely, is going to be beyond insanely difficult. So, and another thing it, that I've done is I've also went ahead and uh, used, is uh, when uh, dusted off the key mechanism using a uh, electrically operated air duster. Uh, is a, like a coffee cleaner 2.0 thing. But that's just but that's just simply to remove all of the metal. This is simply there to remove all of the little shavings and stuff that happened as a result of um, drilling and drilling and whatnot. Basically the process of cutting I'm drilling the holes into the uh, barrel plate, and something I've noticed is these is this these white barrel plates are a whole lot uh, more flexible than the uh, old old school brown uh, covered barrel plates. Now I know I know that Unicomp uses black barrel plates, 
in their uh, modeling keyboards. I don't know how those, how well those will hold up, but I do know that uh, at, yeah, at some point in 1989, IBM thinned out the barrel plate. So what I'm doing right now is I am removing the uh, nuts and washers from the barrel and from the screws because we are about to begin reassembling the entire key, the entire key mechanism. Now, the uh, 1988, the uh, pre-1989 model elms have a uh, brown barrel plate, which is very thick and very rigid. Believe me, uh, if you've ever uh, tried to, if you've ever bolt mounted a brown barrel plate, a, a pre a pre nineteen eighty nine model M, you know the absolutely horrific sound that the barrel plate makes when it goes sliding along a hard surface. It's as bad as those one-piece metal uh, ramps. It's as bad as those one-piece metal ramps and uh, them sliding across hard concrete. Yeah, they make, they make about that noise, except uh, there's no metallic ringing, but it's just as equally loud and ear-hurting. Zero out of ten, do not recommend. But yeah, the, uh, I had just barely enough uh, screw nut washer assemblies to go through every hole that I drilled. And I actually had just one more. So, so if every single hole on here, if every single drill attempt on here would have been successful, then I would not have had any uh, assemblies left. But, yeah, camera battery is certainly running, getting to run low. So I'm going to stop the video and we'll come back whenever I finish up with this. Okay. All of the screws and stuff are out of the barrel plate. Well, not the screws, the uh, nuts and washers have been removed from the barrel plate. So, now, it's time to go ahead and reinstall our buckling springs. Now, the way this works is the flapper on the buckling spring goes towards the uh, little flapper on the buckling spring, this part goes towards the front of the keyboard, the side of the keyboard with the space bar. And it's pretty simple. Spring goes down to the barrel plate, flapper goes towards the front of the keyboard, the little tabs sticking out of the uh, flapper, flipper, thing or what, or what you call it, go into the slots on the barrel plate and it becomes pretty self-explanatory from there. Now I know my uh, 1988 I know my 1988 model M had a few dead uh, had a few dead holes where uh, Flipper where a buckling spring assembly isn't supposed to go, but I'm not sure if this keyboard has any uh, dead holes where a buckling spring assembly isn't supposed to go. So we will just have to see, provided they don't go running away from me, which can be bad. I will return. Okay, all of the flippers are installed, and yes, indeed, we have a dead key right there. 
and I verified this by using the rubber mat as a reference. But there are basically no indentations right there at that spot on the rubber mat. So I'm going to take it that there's not a key there, that there's not a flipper there, and the mat does indeed seem to confirm that. Okay, next step, we need to take our mat. We need to take our mat here, and we need to uh, blow this off using gentle compressed air. Cannot use strong compressed air of any kind because this rubber mat is over. Th this rubber mat is over 31 years old, and it definitely feels like it's still in good condition. But um, I'm not willing to risk it. But the rubber mat and the two membrane layers absolutely 100% need to be dirt free or else you're going to get some really really weird mistyping such as uh, like keys double pressing or triple pressing or not registering at all just weird frustrating stuff like that and yeah copy cleaner 2.0 will be our source of air so yeah so yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break here so that way the camera can be recharged and we will be coming back shortly. Put the drill bit in there and start drilling. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> 